At this point, you should have reviewed the video on an introduction to virtual computing, which is kind of a prerequisite to us discussing the cloud. Um, so, so in this course, not only do you talk about virtualization and virtual computing, but we talk about the cloud and how virtualization is used for the cloud. And again, it's really important to have a good understanding of virtualization in order to understand how the cloud works and how we, we use the cloud. So one of the first things I usually talk about when I talk about the cloud is what exactly is the cloud? Because a lot of people hear that term and they don't really know exactly what that means. And when I'm teaching an intro to computers class, which is really geared towards students who are not going to be going into IT as a, as a career, um, you know, usually it's just kind of a gen ed. I, I, I usually say when people say, when I say, what is the cloud? I say, basically, the cloud is someone else's computer. It's basically your data, your you know, everything that you do with a computer being done somewhere else. Uh, that's all it is. You don't own it. You're just getting time on that system. And most people use the cloud every day. They're using email on the cloud. They're using, you know, social networking in the cloud. You know, none of those things are, are things that we own. We don't own Facebook, right? We just use Facebook in the cloud. We use Gmail on the cloud. Uh, or, yeah, you know, you know, sometimes uh, organizations outsource things like email even to uh, the cloud, which we'll talk about later on. So it's a model for enabling a convenient on-demand network access to a share pool of configurable computer resources, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. That's the textbook definition from NIST 800-145. But like I said, I use the shorthand. Someone else's computer. That's basically what it is. Uh, and that's it. So the other way I'll talk about the cloud is as a utility. Uh, so cloud computing follows the utility model where a provider sells computing resources on an as-needed or as-consumed model. So it allows a company or individual to pay for only what they use and has uh, additional advantages. So think about your electricity. You know, if you wanted to, so there's, there's, you know, this is kind of a good example today because uh, for electricity, we have lots of options now. You know, when I was a kid, pretty much everybody just paid the electric company. But, uh, but when you pay the electric company, you basically only pay for the electricity you use. You have a meter outside your dwelling unit, and that meter is, uh, you know, basically measuring how much electricity you're using in your in your property and then that information is right by the utility company um, if you're in an area like mine somebody actually physically walks around and looks at the meter some of you may have digital meters uh, or meters that are smart meters that are read remotely by the power company but whatever happens they they look at how much uh, energy you used and they bill you for exactly what you used and that's all you pay for another way that you could get energy is you could buy solar panels and put them on your roof. And then you're not paying a utility company for electricity, which is great. But how do you get those solar panels? Well, the problem is you have to buy those solar panels up front. Um, there's other models like leasing and so forth. But for argument's sake, let's say that, you know, if you wanted to get off the grid and uh, sell yourself electricity, you have to buy those solar panels and they might cost anywhere from thirty to $60,000 to install on the roof of your house, at least enough of them to... Uh, to get you off the grid and no longer relying on the power company and getting that bill every month. But you got to have that capital. So our data centers used to be built on the model of buying your own solar panels. Um, and today, uh, with cloud computing, it allows us to use computational power um, and, and hardware resources more like we pay the utility company. You pay for what you use. So for example, if one month you have a lot of activity in your home, and you need 3,000 kilowatt hours, um, you can use that 3,000 kilowatt hours. You just get a big bill at the end of the month. The next month, maybe you're on vacation two weeks and you use very little power. You get a bill you know, for maybe just 700 kilowatt hours, and you only pay for that 700. You don't have to stockpile the energy uh, because you have a fixed amount. And that's how cloud computing works. It's elastic. It allows you to use different amounts of computational power. So. Uh, and typically, the way it works is you, you might have a cloud data center that you connect to. Um, we're going to talk about a couple different service models. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here, and then we'll pick up and we'll talk about different service models for cloud delivery.